me trying to fix my hair. I was gonna actually do it, but I'm a mother now. I am a mother now, so I didn't have time, so it's like all messy. Bear with me, bear with me. What is up guys, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are following me on Instagram or follow me on here and you guys actually saw that I was pregnant, had baby girl already, so she actually came early and that's what we're gonna be talking about today because a lot of you guys had questions about my labor and all that stuff. Um, on Instagram, but I felt like I just do a uh, kind of like a story time on here. Some of you guys were like very observant, and you guys noticed that I was wearing the oxygen mask. And one of you guys were like, I noticed you were wearing the mask. Like, did something happen or why? And I'm gonna go ahead and explain right now. She was actually supposed to be here January 7th, that was my due date, and she came on the 19th. So she was actually about three weeks early, and I honestly was not prepared. I'm slowly learning slowly but surely i feel like i learn things every day nights have been very very long also it just comes with a lot that i feel like you're not prepared for especially the the after like healing the healing process of yourself that i feel like a lot of people don't talk about is what i struggled with too just because i was in so much pain but anyways enough of that go ahead and start with our story time my doctor's appointment that monday and i had her on a sunday so i had her um the do her doctor's appointment that monday of that week and i remember the doctor said like oh like everything looks good you're gonna be able to have her vaginally which is what i was like hoping for because <clears throat> if you follow me on instagram too i also said that i was stressing out a little bit because they were kind of on the fence if I was gonna have to do a c-section cervix did move away from my placenta because that's what was going on they were too close together and if it didn't move away in time um I was gonna have to go through with a c-section so I was kind of scared but that Monday they told me like you're good to go you're good to push vaginally you know it moved like barely enough but you're gonna be able to do it so she's already had down she's ready to go too so it's just kind of like a waiting game I thought she was gonna be here late but she was here very early actually and i had posted this post and i was laughing because i was literally on friday and then she came on sunday saturday night comes along and it's dre's um like holiday party for his gym we got home actually really late that night i think it was like 2 a.m and then sure enough at four -ish, i felt like i needed to go to the restroom and i got up and i maybe tmi but i was like dang i don't think i made it and it was so weird but i like rushed to the restroom and then it was just like clear so then i was like mm. i think that's my water breaking and i googled it and sure enough and i was bleeding a little bit so i was kind of like scared so then i told Dre like we gotta go and we thought it was gonna be a false alarm so i just got my hospital bag and i barely had packed my hospital bag as well so where i just like we were both like half asleep i my idea is my first time being pregnant i don't know what contractions were gonna feel like i know people say they feel like cramps but like on a whole nother level and that's kind of what i was feeling but i was like i don't know so then we went and now we're at the hospital right and i remember the first nurse was like oh like you think your water broke or you know it broke and i was just like well it's clear it was clear i know it was not urine so i'm pretty sure that's what it is and she's like well if that was the case you'd be leaking right now you see your aren't so are you experiencing contractions or cramps and at this point i just told her like you know what it's my first pregnancy like i don't know what i'm supposed to be feeling exactly but this is like the best i can describe it to you and she was just like okay well i'll have someone check to see if it broke but she was like very attitude -y, so i was like mm, i texted her too because he wasn't allowed to go with me and i was kind of like she was like had an attitude type of thing but sure enough when the other nurse came in she was just like when are you due and i told her january 7th and she's like nope you're having this baby today and I was like, what? Like today? And she's like, yes, today. Like you're already, you're already good to go. This is where it gets complicated. I was not in the actual labor room because I didn't have any of those rooms available at the time when I went. So they said, you, we don't have any of them available. So we can only put you in there when one opens up. At this point, I'm already feeling my contractions. So I'm just kind of like, girl. 
I don't know how people do it without an epidural. Whoever does it without an epidural, by all means, praise you because I was dying. Like I was literally dying. And I don't know if I mentioned this on YouTube before, but I hate crying in front of people I would say, or like even Dre, like he's probably seen me cry a handful of times. And a lot of times when I feel like I'm gonna get like cry or anything i'll tell him to like get out of the room or like i'll just remove myself and then i'll go cry like in a corner or something but i remember like they were hurting so bad and i just started crying and i would like turn around and he was like half asleep but i know he was just kind of like helpless like he didn't know what to do but i was hurting really really bad and i was there from like five in the morning to like three i want to say they didn't check me into a room until three I need the epidural like now but the problem was that they couldn't give me one until i went into the labor room so i don't know why i was like that but i couldn't get it in the other room it had to be in the delivery room so i was like i can't do it anymore i, I thought i was gonna die and finally hours later six seven eight nine yeah nine hours later they admitted me into the labor room and they were able to give me an epidural and she's like, oh, the contraction's coming. You shouldn't be able to feel it. But I was like, I'm still feeling it. And she's like, one to 10, how bad does it hurt? And I was like, an eight, like I still feel everything. And um, I was telling her like, I only feel like my left side is numb, not my right side. And then she could try to get another one if you want, or, you know, just go without it. And I was like, well, do people get two? And then she was just like, well, some people do, you know, it's not bad. But I don't know, you know, at that point I was like, just give me the other one. So I got two epidurals, two of them. And if you got an epidural, that also hurts because it's in your back. And I just was like, <sighs> so here we are. She tells me to push and I'm trying my hardest. Like I did, I think like two pushes and then I just, hear her call everybody in a swat of nurses coming in that i was just like what's going on but it sounded like it was an emergency and she was just saying like the heartbeat's going down obviously talking about the baby so i'm over here like stressing out a little bit and i'm just like hey what's going on and then they start turning me like different ways and i think because the baby was freaking out so that's why it was happening and then i obviously started freaking out and the nurse telling me to keep my eyes open and i'm just like well you're literally all i can hear you saying that her heartbeat's going down so obviously i'm feeling some way so that's why i had the oxygen mask it was scary like I, after you know like dre and i were joking around we're like he's like they were literally flipping you like a rotisserie chicken i felt like that so i guess they were doing that to calm her down i think because she tried like coming out but then like I don't know if she got stuck or what happened and she freaked out a little bit so then like she went back in um so they got her to calm down and everything was like fine again so I was like okay we waited like a 30 40 minutes for me to push again so once I started doing it again it just she wasn't coming out and they told me we can either vacuum her out or you know do a c-section um, but sometimes, you know, with the C-section, you've been pushing already for a while that like you just kind of risk not getting there in time. So she was just like, or you can just push and try your hardest to push. But they also then thought a cord was wrapped around her. So they were kind of like, <sighs> so at this point I'm just like, oh gosh, I just felt like I was getting stressed. And, um, sure enough, she came out, she came out, pushed her out. I was able to do that after like everything. It felt like it was like an eternity in there, but she was out and it was just like the best feeling ever. A little thing that I want to point out for you guys is that I did have a whole birth plan on my phone ready to go. Um, I do have some nurse friends and I have some friends that already have been through labor and they told me that it's very important to have a birth plan. But if you don't have one, it's completely okay. Trust me it sometimes doesn't go as planned and that's what happened to me so i know that i didn't want to for example get cut down there i wanted it to be natural unless i tore it myself and i did so that's like 
little things you have to think about skin to skin i know that for sure i wanted that and my hospital already just did that and luckily my hospital just lets you keep the baby with you at all times so that was like a good thing um that i liked like all the tests everything was done in your room for them not to keep checking my cervix and things like that i think they only checked it once i want to say but um yeah if you don't have a birth plan i think it's okay if you do have one it's always so good to go prepared but like i told you guys i had one and it, everything just did not go as planned so i just kind of let them do their own thing um by the end of the day she looks like dre if you guys have seen her i'm like what did she get from me um i think it's just the cheeks maybe for now i don't know and i'm still trying to grasp the fact that i'm a mom but um it's growing on me that's pretty much my story and how it went and it was a little crazy a little hectic god willing everything came out perfectly she was a healthy baby she was seven pounds and one ounce and yeah so her name's anisa aubrey barajas and she is a good baby overall but nighttime she's been killing me but other than that like i wouldn't have it any other way she's just so cute so so freaking cute and um i'm very very happy i know a lot of you guys asked if i had visitors in there i couldn't have visitors i only was able to have dre in there i don't know how it is for other hospitals um i know some of you guys asked that if you guys have any other questions feel free to dm me um i'm also breastfeeding struggling but i'm trying i'm breastfeeding i'm pumping and in between i am doing formula so that's another thing uh, a lot of people made me feel the mom community is insane and they're so supportive it feels so good when they told me like if you can't breastfeed like it's okay as long as the baby is eating something like you're okay so also take care of yourself you know mentally emotionally physically trust me i feel like i've been going through it but i know it happens and it's normal and just know that you're not alone and like i mentioned if you are pregnant or you just had your baby, feel free to DM me. Yeah, so without further ado, I'll go ahead and let you guys go. Don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao, adios, besos, mwah.